Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and today we're going to share some great ideas on how to improve your drawing skills more quickly by either taking part in existing drawing challenges or setting a personal challenge for yourself. And we're going to talk about how these challenges actually help. But before we get on to that as always we want to say a huge thank you to our latest Kofi supporters uh, we've got Jennifer from New Jersey uh, she says I am so excited to apply the techniques and skills that you share for my new art teacher position at middle school for fine and performing artists a perfect fit for me thank you so that was I think lovely. she's going to use uh, uh, where we do our podcast for a performing arts <laughs> But I just think it was lovely. I mean, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Penny Vola, uh, thank you so much, Penny. Um, oh, I, I can't pronounce this. Odessa, it's such a lovely sounding name. Um, but thank you, Odessa. Um, Andy W, thanks, Tara and Sandra. Kick in the Creatives is helping me rebuild my confidence after losing my creative business last year. Great to find such a positive podcast and Facebook group. I've always said, you know, things happen for a reason. So maybe something much better is going to be um, around the corner for you, Andy. Joanna Brown, thank you so much, Joanna. Um, We really appreciate your um, continuous support. Padraig, um, thank you, Padraig, and Marcia Furman, again, thank you so much for continuing to support us every month. We really appreciate that. And Linda, she says, you have the perfect combination, humour and inspiration. <laughs> so who do you think's the funny one and who's the inspiring one then? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know which one I want to be. Which one do you want to be? don't know inspiring no. probably do you? Okay. I'll, I'll, i can live with funny you'd be the funny one <laughs> yeah, go on then. we always really appreciate your support not only does it help us towards the cost of running kick and the creatives and that helps us keep doing what we're doing but it also shows that you like what we do so thank you for that i also want to mention a little note that one of our new members put in the facebook group and that was from sean spinks and he put up a picture of a, a sort of a halloween picture he'd done so he said, in the spirit of Halloween, this is one of my favourites from the past year. That's obviously about his picture. And then it says, I'm loving the podcast. Far funnier than I was expecting. I was looking for some motivating art talk. Thank you for the show. Oh, that's nice. That's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You do all realise that this is a very serious podcast, don't you? It is. <laughs> um, do you know what worries me sometimes? What? That we don't intend being funny. It's just because we say things unintentional that go both of both of our heads <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm sure we're just a bit dippy maybe well, i do Who think knows? i'm a bit dippy tara because um <laughs> because when i have to edit this podcast sometimes um uh, i sometimes realize that you've just said something to me that's really uh, what's the word sarcastic yeah probably but I have completely not noticed it at all until I've listened back. I'm like, oh, she said that. <laughs> and I missed it. I missed it. I'm sure you do the same back and I don't notice. Most likely, yeah. Uh, anyway, what anyway, else have we got? Oh, we've got, we've got some, some news. Yes, we have. Yeah. Yes. Tell everyone about our news. Our news, we've got, um, let's face it, 2022. And this is that I am a guest teacher in Cara Bullock's course. Um I was really excited to get asked, actually. It's one of those things that I would never have imagined four years ago or five years ago, whenever I started drawing by hand again, which just shows the power of creative challenges because this all came about and us doing this is all because of creative challenges, isn't it? So it's a perfect episode. Particularly February Faces for you, isn't it? That's what yeah, you did. Yeah, definitely. The, the, that's the challenge you took part in that um, made you realise that actually Faces is your thing. It is. 
Yeah, which, which is perfect for this course because mm. this course is all about creating faces and portraits. And it's 27 artists and they show how they create portraits and figurative art. So if you want to find out more about it, you can go to kickingthecreatives.com forward slash let's face it. Now, there is an affiliate link, so that means if you use our link, we get a commission. So that really helps support the show. Yeah. Um, actually, I bought the course myself a few years ago. Oh, did you? It's kind of like, yeah. Oh, actually, that might answer a question I had for you. Because I was, I was looking for some links, and I, I just typed in, let's face it, to, um, to our group to search it. Yeah. And um, I thought, well, that can't be right. That was 2017. <laughs> that must have been when you posted about it before oh, no, it might be yeah I think you did because you you shared it you shared the course in the group and I was thinking ah. what did it say 2017 well that's probably why that's probably yeah probably <coughs> when I yeah. took the course mm. although I'm terrible I think I've mentioned before when I take courses quite often I don't actually finish do them. the exercises no and you don't finish them always do you <laughs> no <laughs> but I just use it for inspiration quite often yeah. I think people use it different different ways yeah. uh, we've also got other exciting news for us which is we were, we were part of Adobe Max. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a big creativity conference. And they used to do it in person, so people would go stand on the stage. But because of COVID and everything, it all went online. And it became free because you used to have to pay for it. And we got an email inviting us to be part of this free online creativity conference. Could we? Would we be interested in being speakers? And we thought it was a spoof, didn't we? We thought, and I remember your call when we were saying, Sandra, this has got to be spam. This, why would they want us? I mean, really? <laughs> with it, with this little podcast. And when you look up the site, they have really big names in kind of the industry. Mm. They even have some movie stars. When I was looking on, actually this year, there's a, a few movie stars. Don't ask me who they are because I can't remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> but they have all sorts of different people talking on creativity. They obviously have people talking about their software, but they also have people talking just stuff to inspire you. And it's all completely free. It's running from 26th to 28th of October. If you just search Adobe Max, actually, I've put a, I've just realized I've put a link so you can go. This isn't a, an affiliate. It's just an easy way of finding it, which is kickingthecreatives.com forward slash Adobe Max. And that will redirect you to the registration page. But we got filmed and I had to have my makeup done. <laughs> that, I was looking forward to that more than anything else. I was thinking, I can't wait to see what ta oh. how Tara takes to being all made up. But you just walked in and went, right, slap it all on. <laughs> I, I want know. loads. <laughs> but the funny thing was she kept on all throughout the day because we had we had her on set all day, didn't we? Yeah. On set, I'm saying all posh. Um, <laughs> and she just kept on coming and doing my nose. My nose was obviously shining <laughs> the whole day. Oh, wasn't it? But it was a surreal kind of, experience, though. It was totally surreal. I never thought that we'd have to get filmed walking down the road. No, and and it was funny because we had to get filmed a few times walking down the road, and I said. Am I walking wrong? And they said, no, no, this is, you know, we want to capture maybe um, different angles. Sometimes it might be your feet. And then I thought, God, I wish I'd cleaned my boots. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't polished mine either. No. And, um, yeah, when we walked in, it was so st strange, actually, because the first, when we got that email, and we said, no, this is spam. And then yeah. um, she said, let's talk on zoom and we'll just have a quick uh you know let you know what this is about so we did go on the zoom and sure enough there was an actual human being there and um and she said oh, no the, the some of our adobe um people are familiar with your podcast and i said to you that that's i just still think this is i still think this is <laughs> bad because that can't be yeah. right and um, anyway, then the next time we did this uh, Zoom thing, about five different people from all over America and Canada and, and just appeared on the screen. And I said, oh, well, I guess you're not spam then after all. And they were like, no, we're not spam. I couldn't believe you told them. I didn't. It just came out. You know what happens with my mouth? It keeps yeah, going even when I don't, you know, even when I should stop, even when yeah. I don't. Re I shouldn't talk. My mouth keeps moving and sound still keeps coming out, which is really yeah. annoying sometimes. It was quite funny that you said it. Yeah, yeah I was quite Luckily, surprised. they've got a sense of humour. And yeah. when we got there, we, we walked in and um, and there's just these massive like cameras everywhere and lights and these big boom things. And we're like, oh, my God, what, what the, are we doing? We were terrified. The funniest we? thing, though, I thought was... Um, they got a sofa, hadn't they, that we were getting interviewed on. Yeah. So 
that they made us walk onto the sofa like it was on those chat shows. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. And then they had a camera to, to film us. Mm. And but the guy with the camera was going side to side really slowly, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. So you had to look at the camera, but not try to make it look like you're watching tennis. <gasps> That's right. <wasn't> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And he was the one that kept putting that blooming clapperboard next to my ear and frightening the life out of yeah. me. Yeah, that was deliberate. Yeah, though, wasn't it was. It he was really funny. Yeah. But we had a, an absolute blast we really did it was just so we were just so honored to be even asked weren't we Tara it was just incredible so yeah I mean I think that comes out at the end of uh October doesn't it yeah October 26th to the 28th is a free conference yeah but again that is something that would never have had happened to us if we hadn't taken part in creative challenges yeah or art challenges or drawing challenges or whatever you want to call them yeah yeah so yeah so you never know what if you start a drawing challenge you never know what's going to come from that well before we talk about these um drawing challenges we must say thank you to everyone who's been sharing their work with us on social media so we've got andy w art and he did the script timber challenge oh my goodness his his gorgeous calligraphy quotes did you see them yeah i did yeah, yeah. it's just some people just seem to it, it, you know, like a scroll that you can imagine a king opening in his castle. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the ribbon. Even, yeah. And it, and his was just like that. And he had all these sort of um, lovely quotes on it. What well, kind of oldy worldy looking? It was really cool. Um, I've got loads here, Tara. <laughs> I, have, I bet you're going to nick some of mine because you've only got two written down. So. Oh, okay. Do you, okay. <laughs> do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to say one next then? Okay, I've got Roving J. Yeah. I bet you've got her, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll let me just delete Roving J. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, uh, so what I was going to say was she does these most amazing urban sketches of people. Mm. I'd really like her to teach me, actually. Oh, if you, me if you too. If you want to teach us, I've got my hand up, I'm ready to get your course. Me too, um, me too. It's really made me want to go out again as well, which hopefully we will do soon. Well, we are, but aren't she, we? Yeah, well, what I like is that she sort of does them, I guess, a bit like Felix Scheinberger, where she, she seems to do some with a bit of blind contour and then work into them, maybe. And then she adds watercolour. But, oh, they were just so lovely and lively. I just really like those. I think I'm right in saying this. Does she yeah. add her watercolour later on? So she does the sketches. And I, I think, think so. she adds them later on. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> because... Oh, there! I, 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 you know, I love watching her stuff, and I've thought the same. Yeah, you can come and teach us, Rodin. Yeah, <laughs> we'd like we'd like a private lesson. Yes, please. please. Yes, please. Okay, uh, we've also got Timothy Witt, and he cracks me up. Um, he's been he has been actually creating some really atmospheric art recently for the Kick Three Six Five, which is he's kind of well into that challenge now, and they have a real uniqueness about them, which I really love, and it kind of has this kind of hazy feel um and the people kind of remind me a little bit like Lowry sort of paintings and I've been really enjoying those but he's also one that does a lot of these sort of cartoony character dogs and things like that which really make me laugh so two totally that's different. what I was thinking of when you said him because I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of his characters oh and they are so are funny I, quirky aren't yeah they? I really think they're so funny um but yeah he's all have you not seen the other ones that, that, no oh yeah no they're really I hope they're <laughs> yes, I'm sure they are. No, I know they are. But they yeah, um they're lovely. You have to look those up. Um okay. go on then, you've got another one. I don't want to Okay, yeah, I've got uh Michael Beckett and he never ceases to impress me with his face static Fridays. He just seems to be able to use any type of medium and get great results. And we are just into sort of October. Actually, no, we're kind of middle of October now, aren't we, as we record this. So um, we're seeing loads of people sharing their work for Inktober in the group, which is great. Um, I don't know. There's one one drawing I saw. I thought, wow. And it was a crystal ball and a dragon that Frank J. Ferrer drew. Oh, it was amazing. 
Oh, I think I saw that oh, one I was as like, well. Wow, yeah. that is incredible. Yeah. Um, but Karen Thornton, she's doing our October challenge, which is Creeptober. And I just love um, her cat that she drew uh, wearing the wizard's hat. That was so cool. And I have a feeling, tell me if I'm wrong, you might not know, but I think, did she do a frog as well wearing a wizard's hat? Yeah, yeah. I think she did. A, oh, yeah. I've been loving her Creeptober um, things. And that is it. That's my lot. Oh, the only other one I'd got is Mandy Draper, and she's done some really excellent face tastic drawings. I think I keep I keep note because I like doing the faces. I keep noticing those face tastic ones on Instagram. And there's so many other people, isn't there? We could mention because they're all so fantastic. And I must say, October is my favourite time of year. Um, <sighs> for, I don't get me wrong, seasonal wise, I love October. It's got <laughs> no. its own charm. You know, you've got your log fires, no. and hot chocolate, and all that sort of stuff. I love it. I prefer um, long summer days, definitely. But I do love October. There's a real charm about October, which I really enjoy. But also, it's the favourite time of year for our challenges. Oh, is it? Yeah, I love Creeptober. I love oh, right. Creeptober. It's my favourite. Oh, right. Yeah, not mine. <coughs> I like seeing them, but it's not my favourite. No, you like the you're the no. face, uh, yes, face one. Definitely don't you? the faces. <laughs> I quite like the animals too. Mm. But anyway, what is new with you? Uh, apart from being a movie <coughs> star, apart from being obviously. a oh yeah, and wasn't it lovely meeting George Clooney? Ugh, we, me and George, we're like this. We are. I'm crossing yeah. my fingers. By the way, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we didn't really meet George Clooney. By the way, as if um, <laughs> as if you didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, well, Felicity Fizz is back. She has been away on a Buddhist meditation yep. retreat. Do people know who Felicity Fizz is? If well, just anybody joined? who's just joined us, no. <laughs> but anyone who's been listening to us for a while, they know who Felicity Fizz is. She's a cartoon cr- uh, character that I created probably about a year ago or so. And, um... Actually, more than that. But she's uh, she's been an Instagram cartoon that I've just been doing for fun because I'm a realism painter and it's almost like an exploration of a completely different side to my art. And it's almost a little bit like perhaps she's become my alter ego, maybe. A lot younger than me. <laughs> but she gets up to all sorts of mischief, stuff that perhaps I inwardly want to or maybe have in my very past life (laughs) but anyway she's back I had um because we had all this adobe thing coming up and we had other things we were really busy with at the time making a course which we will tell you when we release that we I I had to put her on the back burner for a bit because I, I just you know when you just can't fit everything in yeah so I sent her away on a Buddhist meditation retreat with her friend Monica and her cat Shampers so she's been away but she's back now um so that's been quite fun, sort of uh, just getting back to, to a bit of fizz. Um, and also, obviously, because of everything I've just said about what I didn't paint for a, a couple of weeks, um, I finally got back to that over the, well, a weekend, a couple of weekends ago. Have you got a date for that exhibition? No, 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 no. It's really good, actually, because it's a kind of when you're ready thing. Oh, right. Because and that's because you you you've got a vineyard, haven't you? And they want to show you some <clears throat> of the paintings. Yeah, they were sort of thinking of doing a cheese and wine evening, a cheese wine and art evening, and and um, exhibiting some of my paintings. And obviously, I've been doing some wine bottles, which is great. But um, I had kind of <laughs> ridiculously thought, oh yes, I'll have one. I'll have it done by autumn. But no, that's not going to happen. It also means you can't sell them, doesn't it? Uh, that's the only trouble. And, and I, I'll yeah. tell you what, I've had this before where I've thought I'm going to, you know, do a collection. And unfortunately, when somebody wants to buy one, I I just think, do you know what, I'm going to sell it then. Yeah, of course. Because you could save that painting and then exhibit it and not sell it. And then really, yeah. so I'd rather just paint see yeah. what's left or see how how long it takes me to have a you know some of enough paintings left and then exhibit quite frankly because yeah but you know we can't turn down sales can we so um yeah so I've got back to that um and that's it really um yeah not a lot else what about you what's new with you well I finished that 50 abstract faces challenge oh, yeah. I set myself <clears throat> and the reason I set myself that was uh, we got a puppy in... When did we get a puppy? Um, well, know. how old is he? He's six months. So, so, <laughs> four, we, four months, months ago. ago <laughs> four months ago, we got a pup. And my God, <laughs> we weren't getting much sleep because he was waking up as up in the night and then getting us up quite early at 5am. 
And so like, I just didn't feel like creating because I was so, we were both so tired. Um, so I decided the only way I was going to create is to set myself a challenge. And this is what I've done before. And it is a great way to motivate yourself. So I was creating a abstract face. Well, I wasn't really creating one per day. I decided that within a set time of 50 days, I was going to create 50 faces. But that might mean that I might not create one day and I might create two or three or whatever another day. But then I'd show one each day. And that worked really well for me, actually, because I find that if I sit down and create one, often I want to create another one. Yeah. And because cause mine take me maybe, you know, an hour, two hours or whatever, you can do that with the type of stuff I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, that really got me creating again and the good thing is the dog is now sleeping through to about 6 30 and we're not having to get up in the night thank goodness oh yeah that's the really hard part isn't it yeah yeah but what i've discovered during that I, I intended to really experiment loads with these faces and i did at first but then i started this style with gum tape and a splash of color and then i was drawing over them and i really liked it and it almost became a little formula for the way I wanted to create things. A little style, I guess you'd call it. So I created quite a lot of faces in that way. But I, I tell you, I can never understand why some do really well on Instagram and some don't. It's because strange, my, isn't it? My favourite six and the top six top six likes, there was only one that overlapped, mm. which is quite weird. But I really like that style and I want to try something big. I've ordered some A2 boards. Right to try and do something bigger i might also try an animal and i also want to try that style for urban sketching oh oh what's up what with the gum tape and just a gum splash tape of and a bit of color <clears throat> yeah yeah mm. so i might even try that when we go out plus i haven't actually told you this i was saving this can i just for... say something first yeah go on then well um just talking about you talking about your style what yeah. i found fascinating about this 50 faces challenge that you've done because yeah. just before that we were chatting on the phone weren't we and you said oh i don't know i just feel like i, I feel like i need to mix it up a bit I, I feel like i'm in a bit of a rut with my style even you know yeah. it took you a while to find it and now you've found it it's like oh now i feel like i'm i'm getting itchy feet what's what i found really interesting about this is that if you were to put, a, you know, you've got that poster you had made of about 12 of your face paintings up on the yeah. wall and they look yeah. amazing. If you were to do a poster of your new faces that you've, you know, the final ones you've done with all your gum tape yeah. and, and that sort of more muted colour, or, or not yeah. so much muted, but less of it, yeah. you would absolutely 100% know that that was the same artist. And it, it's the same, it's still your style, but it, you've done it in a just a different way. So It was deliberate, actually. Yeah, but but um, it's still very much a Tara Voss school face, you can tell. Yeah. Yeah, I was deliberately keeping yeah. um, the big eye, yeah, and yeah, and the sort of stride. So you haven't st you haven't strayed too far, but I, it's amazing how much it's um it's a different feel than the others because the other ones are really really hot punchy colours and these ones are less so, but they are still so um, eye catching. Yeah, because they're different, they're unique, and they're very you. Yeah, I just yeah. It's just that mixing up. I I can't stay still no. I just no. I, I start to get bored mm. so I kind of need to mix things yeah. up a little bit anyway what were you about to tell me Cause now oh yes I'm well I kind of hinted at you well I told you a little bit about this before I've been approached on Instagram a few weeks ago and someone asked me if I would be interested in the possibility of licensing a piece of my art oh has that come off well, basically, it was a company, and they'd said one of their clients might be interested in, in a piece of art. They wanted to be able to show them it. Basically, mm. they obviously look at art, mm. uh, and so I said, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, feel free to show them." So they obviously showed them, but then they came back and they wanted a different one. Oh wow! So um, they have licensed. I've signed the agreement now. Excellent. Uh, whether it makes any money or not, I don't know because these were done at a4 size mm. and obviously they blow them up quite big yeah so i don't know if they're gonna have enough crispness you know when you get to the large size did you did you have a raw photo i i have scanned it myself on my scanner right because they they don't pay anything up front it's purely however many come the company buy you get a percentage 
So this was one of your previous faces you were doing, isn't it? Not no, this is one of the faces from the 50 Faces Challenge. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, the other one they wanted from, was from the 50 Faces Challenge as well. Yeah. But this one, and it was funny because it was one where I sat one day and I thought, oh, I was sitting outside, I think with a pup. And I was like, oh, can't really be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I did something that's got a lot of faces on, kind of doodly looking. And it actually, people on Instagram seemed to like it as well, but it was a real doodle. And people were like, because I said, oh, you know, I, I have struggled to make myself do one today. And they go, did you do all those faces so you could count them as separate? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you could count them as like 10 faces or something, <laughs> which I had thought about doing. But it's funny because they've gone for that one. That's really interesting. And, you know, I think that leads perfectly, doesn't it, into today's topic, if you finish yes. talking about that. Because all of this has come from taking part in creative challenges in fact everything we've talked about whether you know from adobe to you know your um you know 50 faces challenge they've all led to something and it's literally about taking part in a challenge it's inspired you hasn't it yeah and it's um, totally yeah so so i think that's a perfect way to start um the episode uh, half an hour in or <laughs> <laughs> however far in we are already um so yeah we're going to talk about some drawing challenge ideas and and we're talking about it because they're not just fun to take part in but they'll also help increase your drawing practice and improve your art um and may lead to other things as we've said so if you're listening to this podcast you're probably already familiar with our challenges um if not um we'll you know, point you in the right direction at the end of the show. Um, but you might still find it hard to choose uh, which challenge to take part in each month because even, you know, us, we have three challenges a month and not to mention other challenges outside of Kicking the Creatives, things like Inktober and things like that. I mean, you know, what do you, which one do you choose um, and, and why is that good for you, you know? So I think when you're deciding on a drawing challenge to take part in, I think the first thing you need to think about is what you want to achieve with it. So it might be to build a body of work. Um, it might be to practice with a specific medium or skill. It might be to learn from other people. Uh, it might be to learn to see and think like an artist. Or it might be to learn to be decisive and just draw from life. And you can also use a drawing challenge to practice drawing a certain subject, like I did with faces. Mm. Or you can use it to build a creative habit and get yourself drawing every day. And that's quite good, you know, if you just do something small. Uh, a way to start drawing again, perhaps if you haven't drawn for years. Uh, it's another way of connecting with other artists. You know, you've got something common ground to talk about. Or you could just do it purely for fun. So shall we dig into some of those a bit? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so if you're going to use a challenge to build a body of work, you might want to do that because maybe you've got an upcoming exhibition like Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you want to create things to sell at a fair or it could be just a practice so you've got things to show people. Like say you want to do commissions of, I don't know, pets or people or whatever. So you might want to set yourself a big challenge like to draw or paint every day for a year. Yikes! <laughs> you did you did this one, didn't you? It's like yeah, we did because uh, we do a kick three six five challenge, don't we? Which is a drawing every yeah. day for three hundred and sixty five days. And you did it, didn't you? I did it with Felicity Fizz. Yeah, but did you do Christmas Day? I think I uh, drew a couple <laughs> or two, <laughs> three in advance <laughs> for that time yeah, of I year. <laughs> I don't blame so I you. Could post one every day. Yeah. But but you can adapt like you did. You can adapt challenge to work for you. So you don't have to complete one thing every day. You could just commit to spending an hour a day working on something until it's complete. So you could do a big thing. Or like you did, you might do two things one day, none the next or whatever. Just as long as you do that, you've got a piece of art for every day. But it could be a great way to get ready for an exhibition or even to prepare an art portfolio. It's a good point you've just raised, though, about you can What's adapt that? it in that with that three, if I was going to use that th Kick 365 challenge um, for an exhibition, what yeah. I would do is I'd say, okay, I know I can't create an oil painting every day in my style yeah. because I work very thinly in layers. Um, 
I'm not an Alla Prima painter. So um, I would use that challenge to say, okay, I'm going to paint every single day for a year. It might be the same painting that I work on for a whole month, but I'm going to paint every day. So you can you can adapt things to, to work for you, which is really important to remember when you take on a challenge. And I think you should do that with any challenge, mm. you know, from anywhere because I think people sometimes are so worried mm. that oh it says I have to create a painting every day no you don't yeah you do what, what works for all you all the prompts you know oh I got to do something related to x today because this is what the prompts are the prompts are optional and I think that's the case with pretty much well most of the um challenges whether yeah. they're ours or other people's I think they're usually optional aren't they I think the reason people have created all these challenges is to get people creating more if they want yes. to. It's not to be dictators like you must do this. No, no. is it? It's no, just no, no. it's just to help people build a body of work. But can I just say something? If, whenever you say a la prima, it just reminds me of ballerina. And prima I just ballerina, imagine, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I just imagine you painting while wearing some ridiculous tutu. <laughs> <laughs> I used to very. I used to be very fetching in a tutu. I have you know you? in my dancing days. Yeah. Do you wear one for painting? Every now and then, you know, I get it out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you might. I mean, you know, I was probably twelve when I wore it last. But <laughs> can you still fit in it though? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, my boob, anyway. my boobs couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, carry uh, on that note. Please. Anyway, yes, on, move moving on, move on. swiftly on. <laughs> yeah, if creating every day is too much, maybe you could just set yourself a challenge to paint once a week for a year. And that would still mean that you've got plenty of work to show for it, you know, for that exhibition or for, you know, doing that uh, craft stand, whatever it is. And it's less pressure to put on yourself. And if you do that, it doesn't mean then that you only have to create once a week and it might even give you the bug. So I think any challenge like that where you're setting yourself this little task can grow, can't it? Or shrink, mm. or whatever you've done. Because we've now set a new challenge actually called Kick 52. For anyone who wants to do that because we realise that people want to create regularly but sometimes every day is too much for people so yeah join that challenge if you fancy doing yeah that. kick 52 is to create one drawing a week for 52 years uh, 52 years <laughs> <laughs> now that's a heck of a challenge wow uh, yeah create one drawing a week for 52 weeks um we actually put on the group didn't we you know if there's challenges that people would like us to create and um, somebody said like a weekly one so we decided yeah let's go for that and i think that i think a lot of people will do that one yeah mm. are you gonna do that one uh, I think I I do that anyway <laughs> you're not gonna commit yourself I, I, you? well I do that anyway I mean I always draw yeah. once a week do you know what I mean well yeah. at least <laughs> um okay so oh, I've, hang on, I've got one more have you it, yeah, I have. If a year sounds way too much of a commitment mm. just go for 30 or 60 days or anything in between just if you do at least 30 days that gives sort of a good kickstart to to doing something doesn't it it's a it's a good amount of time to, yeah to build that habit yeah definitely um i do want to point out actually that i know we're, we're kind of mentioning our challenges we're not trying to push our challenges on you because there's so many out there isn't there it's just that we're mentioning ones we've got that relate to the things we're talking about so just in case you think oh stop going but make on. sure you do <laughs> ours <laughs> stop talking about your challenges <laughs> So the other thing is um, to practice with a specific medium or skill. So that's another um, good way of using a challenge. For example, you might want to learn to use pastels, which you may not have used before, or watercolours, um, which you're not familiar with. And one thing I would say is when you first try something new, you know, you might not immediately get on with it. And it's easy just to think, oh, I'm moving on. I'm going to try something else. But if you're taking part in a challenge for a month you've got more time to get used to how that medium responds and it might be by the end of the month it's still not for you on the other hand it might have really grown on you and if it turns out you just needed more time to get used to it you may have missed out um and do you, do you not find with something like that because i know i do something and, and you get to a day like mm. so you say when i was trying to do watercolors for a bit mm. And you get to a day and suddenly something clicks. And you, you, you can't even say what it is. Yeah. But suddenly you paint a painting and you think, do you know what? That's not too bad. Yeah. When up to, the, up to that, you're about ready to 
rip the thing up and yeah. shred it, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then there's suddenly a day, and it might not happen the next day. You might go back to being completely rubbish. But there's something where you see that slither of hope that you might be getting it. It's that aha moment, isn't it? Yeah. And like you say, you can then go backwards, but you know that you, you, you it's know possible. what you're looking for now. Yeah. Yeah. And we've we've got Aqua January. Um, it's a good example of a challenge like that where, you know, you you just um commit to a water based challenge throughout the month. And and do you know what Can I mention another one? Just because yeah. we said we don't want to talk about all our challenges, Doodle Wash as well does loads of watercolour challenges. Yes. So if you're really into watercolour as well, check out Doodle Wash. Yeah. Um so the other thing as well is like and we we've had this, haven't we, Tara, where I suppose that brush pen, you remember you... Oh, yeah. You no, know, it was the Japanese brush pen. You said, oh, yeah. and I tried it on our, one of our first sketching trips together. And I hated yeah. it. I was like, oh, I can't use it. I've got no control over this at all. I don't like it at all. And you kept, uh, you kept saying, no, you should try it again. Try it again. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then eventually I did try it again. And I thought, oh, mm, actually, it's not as bad as I remember. Now I love it. I, so I love that pen. It's one of my favorite pens. And you had the same when you tried the Lamy Joy, which I suggested to you. And you went, oh, no, this isn't for me. Um, put it to one side. It actually wasn't the Lamy Joy. I, tr- I got a Lamy Safari, didn't I, that you suggested. Yeah. And no, I tried so many fountain pens and none of them. I didn't like any yeah. of them. But the Joy, when you suggested that, I really do like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it just goes to show, but you, you've got to use it more than once or twice to sort of get the yeah. feel free. You, sometimes you have to try to go back to things again and again just for a little while, just in case you're missing something. Um, another thing you might want to do, you might want to use a challenge to work on your colour mixing skills. And one of the most common things a beginner artist might do is to rush out and buy every single colour known to mankind. But, you know, a colour that's been created by mixing two or three colours is so much more interesting and unique than a colour that's been squeezed straight from a tube. And you'd be amazed how many colours you can make using just the three primaries and a white if you're not using watercolour. Um, So by limiting your palette to just the three primaries for a whole month, you'll learn which um, colours mix well together and which ones don't. Um, And we actually launched the August Trio Challenge this year, didn't we? And that was quite a popular challenge. Proved more popular than I expected, actually. And that's where you literally just use three primaries throughout the month. But... um, you know, I was talking about my wine paintings earlier, my wine yeah. bottle paintings. They're yeah. primarily, primarily they're, you know, they're just green wine bottles. And not one of those colours I've used is, is straight from a tube. None of them are. And some of them are quite a, a complex mix of colours to get the colours that I've, I've managed to get. Um, so, and, and I wouldn't, uh, unless I had sort of got my head around colour theory, um, which basically starts with learning how the three primaries you know mixed together I would never have had the skill to do that actually I think we should do something maybe on colour mixing Mind you, you'd have to lead that another day you're probably gonna say I hate that idea Ugh, so boring though colour theory <laughs> <laughs> In a previous episode, you don't want yeah, to do. In a previous episode, I mentioned that I, you know, being a self-taught artist, you have to be really self-disciplined. And one of the things I tried to skip was color, color theory because I thought, oh, I, you know, I'll get my head around that eventually. No, 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 no. I re- I, I realised quite soon. No, I need to. I really need to work on this, and I need to learn, which I did. But yeah, I didn't want to l- have to learn it because I thought it sounded really boring. And yeah, it's really. <laughs> If anybody wants us to do a colour theory podcast, please let us know and we will. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much of it, so fortunately I'll just be asking the questions. Yeah, yeah. You'll be tripping yeah. me up every five minutes, won't well, you? Well, <laughs> I don't know much of it. I, I, know, I know some, mm. but I'm not as in-depth as you. The thing is maybe. about colour theory is once you know it, most of what you mix for future paintings is instinctive. You don't really yeah. think, oh, well, th- if I use a bit of this, that'll create this or that'll neutralise that. It just becomes an instinctive thing. And that just takes yeah. practice. Anyway, we're not talking about colour today. No, any, uh, one thing I did want to mention, actually, was I saw it I saw the other day, uh, saying since we're mentioning other challenges. And I can't actually remember to- totally what this challenge was called. It was something like colour rimbo. But 
don't hold me to that because it might not have been but I thought this was a really clever idea and what it did was each day it gave you two colours to use in your painting I'm not saying it didn't have to be a two colour painting but they had to be the two predominant colours right and I thought I liked that idea mm. because say I tend to use uh, they're quite primary in general not the latest lot of bases I've done well, I suppose they are if you still use a red it's not you know it's fairly bright but one of the other things I liked about this challenge was you might never have thought of putting those two colors together and they might really work for you and I saw some work that one artist had done called Rossa Russ and uh, I just really liked it and she said I perhaps wouldn't use these colors normally but I think I've made it work and I think it's just a way of experimenting with things that you might not have thought of before mm, mm. You can also le use a challenge to learn from other people. So like we were saying, we want to learn from Roving J. Yeah. When you set up a challenge, Roving J. Mm. Um, the great thing is you can see the way different people approach a challenge. So this can give you ideas for why you might not approach something you hadn't considered before. Say, for example, like I was saying, I saw that woman using two different colours. Yeah. I mean, I might think, oh, I really like the way those colours work together. Um, you might also want to try copying drawings by artists you admire uh, maybe by the great masters i mean you can obviously do it by people who are living now but if you do that you want to make sure you credit them and and you're not selling that work it's not for commercial way but it's a great way of to learn other people's techniques we actually got a challenge called copyist tune where we try and do this also with that you don't have to copy an entire drawing or a painting you could just take an element of it so if there's a particular painting you like, oh, I'd love to be able to paint like that. And it's, of yeah. a, I don't know, a, one of those old master drawings where everyone's sort of surrounded by a feast of fruit and wine and all that. You might just see a, a goblet in the corner. You think, oh, if I just try and copy that, it just gives me an idea of how they lay their brush strokes, that kind of thing. So you don't have to do a whole thing either. So again, just adapt to suit you. It's a nice word, that, isn't it? Goblet. Goblet. Yes. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Um, another thing is... Oh, hang on, just, can we go, just go back to Copyist June? Yeah. Because when we set up that challenge, which was Copyist June, to copy a uh, work of a master or from a book, you know, a drawing book, mm. I said to you, but I wouldn't want to copy a piece exactly because I'd find that really boring. Mm. Why don't we open it up so people can take influence yeah. from somebody, but then they draw something themselves so say you might see a face by picasso yeah but then you might draw a completely different face but with a inspired by picasso and you said i don't like that idea <laughs> <laughs> anyway now i have my way we have a new challenge to do that don't we yeah so we've got copious june like we said before where you actually it could be just be a tutorial book where you, they've drawn something and you think right i want to try and replicate that exactly and the reason i thought that would be a really good idea is because it really does get you into the mind of how that artist works and there was one i did actually and i thought i just can't get my head around this but this doesn't feel right and I just it just doesn't feel right and and then I realized it was actually because the artist was left-handed so all of the strokes were going a complete opposite direction that would come naturally to me so I I ah. realized that, that was not I, I although I could copy the drawing I had to do the hatching the way I had to do it if you know what I mean you'd have to flip the drawing yeah it might have even been a Leonardo I think it might have been a Leonardo or something I don't know but oh it didn't set your stakes very high then <laughs> <laughs> always set your stakes high <laughs> yes yeah, so tell us about the other one then the other challenge mm. i would do if i can remember what it was called <laughs> <laughs> well it's called style you wary because we couldn't we couldn't think of a, a really good name could we, we were like oh what is it? i'm sure it's style you yeah, we've only just, we've That's only just right. invented it it's coming up next year we've got a few new ones next year what we're trying to do every year because we've been doing this now three or four years haven't we three years and each year what we're doing is we're keeping all of the core um challenges that are really popular and people really love and we will keep those and as the years go by we're taking ones that really aren't sort of people aren't really getting into and we're replacing them with something we think perhaps might they might enjoy more so that's how we're doing it but all of those oh, yeah we did ones. ask in the group didn't mm. we for, the, for this yeah we always try and get everybody's input because obviously it's for them isn't it so um but that yeah like you say that is to be inspired by someone else's style 
a famous artist, you still credit with them with how, you know, where you got your inspiration from. But you create your own thing, like Tara said. Yeah, much better idea than copy. Oh, you see, I opinion. think it is really popular, <laughs> that one. Yeah, but then now they've got the best of both worlds. So Now they have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so another thing you um, might learn from a challenge is to see like an artist. And we hear this all the time, don't we? See like an artist. What on earth does that mean? We've all got eyes, you know, we all see the same. But, you know, I think something you all often hear as a beginner is to draw what you see and not what you think you see. And and that's something when I was at, you know, when I first started, I was like, what on earth does that mean? You know, what what ha- I don't understand what that means. But basically, what it means is it's easy to draw something familiar and assume a lot of the information you're taking in rather than actually looking and observing it, what's actually in front of you. So a really good way to train your brain away from that habit is by practicing drawing upside down for example so you find an image a photograph um, you turn it upside down and then you draw the image and by doing that you're removing your brain's needs to label everything and instead of you know thinking oh um, I need to draw that neck of the bottle and the edge of that label you're not looking at it as a bottle and a label you're looking at as shapes and curves and angles so then what you do is you when you finish your drawing you turn it the right way up and you turn your image you were working from the right way up and then you can see how accurate you've been and uh, yeah doing something as simple as that over a month is so so good for you really really good for you and it's a really good lesson to learn you know uh, and, and how to see like an artist and another really helpful challenge is to paint with only one color and white, um, unless you're using watercolour, um, for a whole month. And artists tend to think more about tone than they do colour. Once you've got your head around colour, um, sorry, once you've got your head around tone, colour can come later. And colour can actually be quite a distraction at first. So by removing colour from the equation, you've got no choice but to notice the various, you know, lights and darks and the tonal values of your painting. And you'll, you know, you'll learn the importance of that. And like I say, colour can come later. Tone, actually, learning tone is more important to begin with. Actually, I remember when I was about 14, I went to that watercolour class. It's an adult education one. Mm. They did with those... It was uh, sepia drawings yeah. first of all I mean it sounds quite old fashioned yeah. obviously using that one colour that I can't it was yeah. a, a, a burnt umber or something yeah. we were using or sienna or burnt sienna and using that it did really focus your mind because you were only thinking about light and shadow mm. weren't it doesn't you? have to be one it doesn't have to be like an earth colour you could use um, ultramarine blue no. or something like that and that, that sort of brings it more into the modern, do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean we we used to do that as well, and um, it's quite interesting though because the thing about colour, you know, people say, "How does that work?" He's done a purple tree. The reason it'll work is because the tones are right. So once you understand tone, it doesn't matter what colour you use, as long as that colour is the same tone to what you're trying to get, then it will work. Yeah, yeah that's why it's the, how I do yellow faces. Yeah, that's right. And and you know what? That's why if a, if a painting is not looking right and you just can't put your finger on why, what you do is you convert it to black and white. So you take a photograph of your painting, convert it to black and white. And if it's not working in black and white, that's why it's not working. So it means you've got your tones wrong. Um and that could be that you've chosen colors that are not you know the correct tone. So yeah. it's quite so, interesting. So something's not dark enough, something's not light enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got sort of two rolled into one. So there's to learn to be decisive and then drawing from life. And you might want to set yourself a challenge to be more decisive. And that would be to draw with a pen. Because so often when we start drawing, it's with a pencil. And I, I know a lot of people stick with a pencil. Mm. But the problem with that is sometimes you don't commit to your line because with a pencil, it's so easy to just rub it out or to draw really lightly and then go over the top. Whereas with a pen, you've got to decide, right, this is where my line's going. Although you can draw lighter, it's much more of a commitment. And I think it it makes you look more, like you were just saying, it's that learning to see as an artist. You look more because you, you know it needs to be right. It doesn't need to be right, but 
it's you know you want it to be right yeah. don't you mm. and then also you might want to practice drawing for life and that could be things around your house or it could be getting out and doing some urban sketching i so want to do some urban sketching but drawing from life is so different from working from a photo because when you work from a photo all the composition has already been worked out and unless you, unless you change it of course and it's also been flattened to 2d mm. and nothing moves but I actually have a problem that when we go out urban sketching, because I get so used to working from photos from things, trying to work out how I'm going to put what I want to put on a page, I find that quite tricky. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, I remember when we went on our first urban sketching trip, we decided, yeah. oh, let's draw some moving people. And I mean, of all the places we chose, it was a nice skating rink. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and people were zooming around at 100 miles an hour. I'd approach that very differently now than I did then. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually a really important skill, I think, to learn and a very enjoyable one when you do get your head around doing that. Well, actually, you do know that we're going in two weeks, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. But, but it's that thing, like, if we were drawing buildings, for example. Yeah, oh, God, I hate buildings. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. But if we were drawing that, well, I was obviously on a photo, it's fine. Because I can see my paper. I can see how it relates to the photo. Mm. So I know roughly, oh, okay, if I start that building, I start that a third along the paper. But when I'm looking at a scene... Where is the third? Where does the third start? You know, it's that. Yeah. Heavy. I mean, some people hold up viewfinders, don't they? They make a little cutout of a piece of cardboard and hold it up. I suppose with Just, me, I'd look for what my focal subject is. If my focal subject was a person sleeping on a bench, I would put him where I wanted to be in the page and work outwards from him. Yeah. So that's how I would do it. Um, yeah, I just... Yeah, you do p see people doing that, and that is a really handy way of doing it. But yeah, I would just pick where what I'm focusing on, and then fade outwards. Yeah, mm. but I think that it, it's such a difference, and that is it is good to train your eye oh, like that. Definitely, isn't it? <clears throat> definitely. We've got yeah. an urban sketching challenge as well, haven't we? Surprise, surprise, <laughs> we have. <laughs> yeah, and it's a nice time of year. What time of year is it? C oh. Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's August. I think it's August. It? Yeah, I think something yeah. like that. Yeah. No, I think you messed up here because I seem to have loads to say and that's that's not normal. Yeah. So <laughs> Well, you always tell so, me I don't stop for breath, so I'm, I'm stopping for breath. <laughs> I'm probably talking too much in this one. So you can also use a challenge to practice drawing a certain subject. Maybe there's a subject you've always wanted to master, but you've never actually made time to do it. And that could either be just for fun or maybe you want to create a business from it. So imagine if you want to start painting pet portraits and doing commissions but you haven't actually got that many paintings to show people maybe you've done some in the past but you haven't got you know copies of them so if you set yourself a challenge to draw pets for a month that means you've got 60 pictures to potentially show people obviously you're going to pick the best ones mm. but it gives you a really good selection to say oh look yeah I can draw that type of dog I you know I've done this I've done this it's a real body of artwork to show people um and surprise, surprise, we've got something that can help with this. We've got, we've got quite we've got, a few things. Yeah, we've got 31 Animals August, and that would be perfect for a pet portrait person. You know, you could pick to do that, or maybe if you actually want to do animal drawings. And then we've got Quick Kick October, where you draw the same subject every day, and that can really help you master something. So that doesn't and have to be as boring as it sounds. So, for instance, you might want to... Did I sound boring? No, no. <laughs> But you're just, yeah, no, you didn't sound boring, but the actual challenge sounded boring to all the same thing every day. But yeah, it could be that you want to master hands. And so you, so what you could do is you could um, draw hands all in very different positions every day, different hand gestures. Uh, I'm making one now. <laughs> <laughs> you're so mean to me. Anyway, yes, so that's that you can make it interesting. Or, or if you're doing faces, you know, different facial expressions and things like that. I just wanted to say something about our quick kick challenges, actually, because we have these quick kick challenges, and what they are is challenges that you complete in 15 minutes or less. Mm. And the idea behind that is anybody can, can do those challenges because they're quick. But, and what we always say is just because we say they're quick kick challenge doesn't mean you can't spend an hour on them if you want to. Yeah. Because we get people in the group and say, oh, 
it's all I could get done in 15 minutes. I didn't really manage to finish it. But we, we only set them to try and make it possible. We don't set it so you can't make it as long as you like, really. That's it. And again, it's, it's that thing, bending a challenge to what works for you. Yeah. Uh, I think you've already covered this bit. We've also got February Faces and Portrait July where, you, where you're drawing faces every day. I mean, that would be great if you wanted to start offering portraits to people. Mm. I would be scared to death to do that, you know. I, I think what's terrifying about something like that mm. is that you even if you do something you're happy with it yeah you don't know if they're gonna feel like it looks like the person it's very different especially if you don't know the person exactly it's it's exactly what i was gonna say it's very different drawing a person you're very familiar with than it is to draw someone you're not because if you're not familiar with that person you've got a photo to work on which captures one particular expression i remember drawing my dad years ago and he's really difficult to draw and one of the things the hardest things to draw is his mouth but I just having known my dad for all my whole life I just knew that there was something in the photo that wasn't um it wasn't capturing how he normally holds his mouth because it just wasn't and I had to do something and then I thought there's my dad that's my dad that's what when you know somebody that's what makes it so much easier but when you don't know someone like you say it's very very difficult you're just capturing what you can see and you can't you can't look any further than that you know your mouth would be hard to draw yeah I know what you're gonna (laughs) say yeah it doesn't stop stop moving does it um Another another challenge we've got, if you want to concentrate on drawing flowers, maybe you want to sell flower paintings or you, or you just want to, or maybe you want to make greeting cards with flowers on. We've got a Blooming Marvellous May challenge as well. And like we said before, if these challenges don't work for you, create your own like I did. Create the 50 abstract faces. Don't create the 50 abstract faces because I've done that one. <laughs> but, but create 30 abstract faces or whatever you like. Just make it work for you. Yeah. It's a really good way of, of building a creative habit as well and getting yourself drawing every day is, you know, joining a challenge. So challenging yourself to draw every day for a month is a great way to help form a creative habit. But there's some debate, isn't there, on how many days it takes to form a habit. Some people say it's 80 days. Some people say, oh, no, it's a month. But, um, you know, if you're up for the ultimate challenge, you could try this uh, you know the kick 365 challenge and that's where you draw something every day for an entire year which we have spoken about already but you know what the best thing about that is that you know you compare your first drawing to your last at the end of the year and you'd be amazed at how much you'll improve yeah I and we mentioned like about a way of starting drawing again we just want to dig into that a bit more so if you haven't drawn for years, challenges are a really great way to get yourself motivated. Because if you decide that you're going to draw, it's one of those things where you'll tend to like, oh, you draw, do a drawing one day, and maybe you don't like it, like you've done before, haven't you? And then that's it, you don't draw again yeah. because you didn't like that drawing you've done. Mm. Which is really not what you want when you start. You need to make that commitment. And so by doing a month or, or whatever set period that you give yourself, it means that you've made that consistent effort and you can at least hopefully start to see that improvement. And if you're a bit scared when you start drawing, there are ways you can take the pressure off a bit. So you could draw with a continuous line, which is where you put your pen on the paper and you don't take it off. So it's just that continuous line going around the whole outside of an object or whatever you're drawing. And you can get some really fun results that way. You can do that blind as well, so you're not looking at your paper while you're doing it, and you're doing that continuous line. And we have challenges to do both of those. We've got Quick Kick April, I think it is, and then, oh, I can't remember all Quick Kicks. Just go look at the website. I can't remember all the names. (laughs) Too much for my brain. But all those as well, as well as being things that kind of give you nice quirky results, they train your eye, because like a blind contour when you're not looking at your paper it trains you to really study your subject. And the object is not to make a great drawing. The object is to look closely at the thing you're drawing. I think as well, it takes away the fear, doesn't it? it takes, because you already know that your drawing's not going to be great because it can't be. So, you know, whereas normally you look at a, a sketchbook page and you think, oh my goodness, you know, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> you, you know, you know, you, you, 
already you're kind of looking at what you're hoping to achieve and and you know that that's that's a hurdle straight away whereas with these kind of ones like the non-dominant hand as well that um that challenge with the blind contour and the continuous line all of those you know they're not going to be great drawings at the end of it so it stops you being frightened of the result because you already know that that's not going to be a great result you're just going to learn something from it yeah and even though you think it might not be a bad result sometimes you can be actually pleasantly surprised which is always a bonus Mm. I mean you did those I really like them some blind contours of faces yeah. that you really really didn't want to do and then you put a bit of watercolor and they're, they're really fun they aren't are they? quirky yeah actually I've kind of getting I'm starting to really like blind contour drawings more and more yeah. and then another fun exercise is to use your non-dominant hand now that feels really weird mm. when you try and draw with your long non-dominant hand but apparently it's supposed to awaken the creative side of your brain I think mine needs more of a wake <laughs> But it's the other side of my brain that needs waking up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, again, if you're drawing with the wrong hand, you can't expect to be perfect. So it kind of lets you off the hook again. And if you are worried and being precious, don't get a really nice sketchbook. Buy a cheap one. As long as you're not intending putting watercolour or anything like that in it, just buy something cheap and throw away because then you're not going to be scared of wasting it. Do you know, I went to an exhibition once in a little local yeah. gallery and there was an artist there. there was, I think it was two or three artists exhibiting and there was one artist there that really stood out to me and he had done all sorts of urban sketches. or not. Well, they were paintings, like big paintings, um, like watercolour paintings and pen. And what was really interesting about his work is there was some kind of naivety a kind of wonkiness to it I really enjoyed I was like wow there's something really different about this artist who is he and the lady behind um the the desk she said oh you know he deliberately does all of his drawings left-handed and he's a right-handed yeah. artist so that's why his they are quirky because obviously he's he's chosen to do it that way um it's not like he's using his dominant hand and choosing to draw things wonky he's he's using his hand that he wouldn't normally use so and that's really was he painting them like that as well yeah so he was oh I don't know do you know what that's something I don't know I don't actually know if he was adding the watercolor left-handed although that was very loosely done so most likely but yeah the actual drawings itself there was a London um scene with you know the walkie-talkie and the gherkin and the millennium wheel and and they were all just quite wonk like wonky but it was really really cool how he'd done it i really enjoyed those there's a woman online uh, on instagram called cherry peak c-h-a-r-i peak mm. and she does uh non-dominant faces they're not they're not realistic faces they're just her faces mm. but i did see her put one day that her non-dominant was becoming quite good do you know what I mean was becoming a bit more dominant yeah oh that's interesting I mean I'm guessing you get that problem that if you do start drawing that way eventually I assume it becomes quite good yeah I suppose you're just going to get better and better aren't you yeah um another reason to do a challenge of course is to connect with other like-minded artists so um often if you've taken a you're taking part in an online challenge there'll be a place where you can connect with the other people taking part for example you know we've got our own private Facebook group where everyone who takes part in the challenges can share their work and engage with each other and that's so lovely because we've seen so many friendships forming haven't we over the last three years and it's it's really nice to see each other one you know everyone g'ing each other on and encouraging each other and you know sharing their you know their their drawings it's been really really nice and I think the thing about being in a group like that is that you're more likely to stick to the challenge because you'll feel more accountable as well and of course you know it's always a great um, way of seeing how different artists approach the same subject or medium in different ways and you'll find yourself feeling inspired to try new techniques and styles and in fact we've got several people in the group who've been trying techniques that the others have shared and that's something you just don't get when you're doing a challenge on your own and another thing you can do is just to do a challenge purely for fun and just because it's got to beat some of the crappy tv oh yeah we've got at the moment mm. well especially during lockdown the tv was shocking because i couldn't make any 
So, for example, we've got a doodling challenge called Doodle in December and a cartoon challenge called Quick to Kick June. They're the sort of challenges that you can do, you know, just while you're sitting with your feet up, what, watching the bad TV, <laughs> even. Or if you don't like making a bit of mess, you could be very experimental and do sort of, sort of journaling type thing and just colours and mark making. But those are just kind of almost like, a way of letting go at the end of the day or the beginning of the day just to clear your mind there's there's no real stress with doing that sort of challenge no that's right um there are a few other things to consider though when you're choosing a challenge so you need to think about how much time you've got to spare uh how long you want the challenges to last and how regularly you want to draw whether you like to do your own thing or you prefer to be part of an organized drawing challenge if you need an accountability partner or whether to set yourself a reward. I like the sound of that. So, yeah, let's <laughs> dig into those a bit. Okay, so I've got how much time you've got to spare. And obviously, if you haven't got a huge amount of time, you don't want to commit yourself to this massive challenge. It's far better to commit a small chunk of time and then you can always do more if you want to. So you can do some really simple challenges like maybe a time drawing one. So we've got one called Five Minute March. And obviously, just like the name says, it's just a five minute drawing every day. And I always find that when I do something like that, you can guarantee that I'm going to do three five minute time drawings. I'm not probably just going to sit there and do one. But of course you can if you want. And those ones you can fit in like during a break or when you're sitting in the car, if you're waiting to pick, pick up kids or waiting to pick up someone or if you're at the doctors or whatever in the waiting room. So it's different places like that. And the other thing is how long you want the challenge to be and how regularly you want to draw. So if you're someone who bores easily, like Tara, <laughs> then a long challenge or one that focuses on a specific subject or medium probably isn't for you. So you would start with perhaps a 30-day challenge instead and one that gives you free reign to draw in any subject you like on any day. So maybe Mixed Media March, that might be a good one for that. And then just see how you feel. Um, you might have more time some days than you do others because of you know maybe other commitments so maybe a weekly challenge could work for you um and that's where perhaps the kick five two challenge would work um and that's where you obviously draw the once a week for a whole year now this means you can work on a drawing all week um if you want to as as and when you find the time or you can just draw something more simple in one day it gives you a lot more flexibility than other challenges but it still helps you to form a creative habit and uh, we also have Facetastic Friday Challenge, don't we? And that's just a, an Instagram-only challenge. And you can always join in with that as well And if you have the time. And you don't... The thing is about that one is it's not something you have to do every week either, is it? If you just want to take part for one week, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's just a, a royalty-free face photo yeah, you put up, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, um, exactly. And that's always fascinating to see how many, you know, different artists pro produce the same image if you like in so many different ways and they see things in so many different ways so that's really really good um, to take part in it might be as well that certain times of the year you've got far less time than normal for example the lead up to Christmas or maybe the school holidays while you've got children at home so during those times you know try to pick a challenge that's not too much of a commitment and I think this is where the quick kicks challenges are really great because they do take anything from five to 15 minutes and I think everyone can find that no matter what they're doing. And we mentioned whether you'd like to do your own thing or be part of an organised drawing challenge. Now the plus side of joining in with the existing challenge is that you've got more accountability because a lot of them have groups to go with those challenges and if you know people are going online and doing, you know, doing their challenges too, it might, you might be able to cheer each other on a bit. Mm. But then you can also adapt existing challenges to see what you want to do. For example, we have got an art journaling challenge in January, but there's no reason you can't choose your own theme. So we have, a, let's say, a suggested theme of doing something to do with your day. But maybe you think, I don't want to do something to do with my day. I'd rather do something to do with leaves and trees and flowers. So you can make that your theme instead. It, it, you know, bend it to what you want to do. I mean, I actually remember taking part in the 100 day challenge. Have you done that one before? No. no 100, it's a 100 day project, actually, I think it's called. Yeah. But something like that, I, I love that because I remember someone suggesting I should do it. And I'm like, no, no way. I am not going to do that. Because the reason they were suggesting it was because I'm not very good at sticking to things because shiny new object, you know, or idea <laughs> comes along. 
and they said you know you should do that challenge so I did it and I must admit after about day day 10 I'm like what have I done I thought you were gonna say day two then (laughs) day 10 because I was doing um post-it note cartoons sticky Mm. note cartoons but it's amazing what it can do for you doing that challenge and what kept me going was people saying oh well done you know you done really well and everybody else who's doing that 100 day project not everybody else but some other people were doing it would come along look at what I was doing make a comment I'd go and check theirs out so I'd be cheering them on they'd be cheering me on were you working digitally back then when you were doing that yeah that was digital Yeah. Yeah. yeah Um, another good reason is if you need an accountability partner and that can really help um, when you're taking part in a challenge and sometimes just being part of a Facebook group is enough so if you're in a group you know you you feel like you need to show up otherwise people might know that you haven't done the challenge today and even if actually that's probably not true it's a psychological thing isn't it you know you get that feeling of like oh I'm letting everyone down that everyone's going to know I haven't drawn today um or you if you have a creative friend who'll do a challenge with you that's really great as well and it's it's a bit like going to the gym isn't it if you go together you normally go together you don't want to let the other person down so you show up even when you normally don't perhaps feel like it do you know what I mean yeah I don't even think the other person has to want to do the same thing because in the past I've done things with um, my friend Lisa but she's say wanted to get some video in done Mm. So I might say, well, I want to get this done. She'll say, I want to get that done. So we'll have done this amount of things by the end of the week and then report back in. So it could be a totally different thing the other person wants to achieve. But it is helpful, isn't it, I think? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. And you might want to set yourself a reward for doing a challenge. So that could be something really big, like a trip somewhere, or it could be something smaller, like an art book or a bar of chocolate now you've written on my notes (laughs) in a bullet talk about the donut in the safe yeah you see what you know I vaguely remember talking about this before yeah and I can't remember what it was about but I know it's really interesting (laughs) because I think when we did we did a previous podcast and it was something about setting yourself a or part of it was about the accountability and setting yourself rewards and for some daft reason I think I had the idea, I don't know, you had the idea of putting a donut in the safe that you can only get at the end of the challenge. But all I hope is it's a very short challenge. Yeah, I was going to say, because it would be a bit, be a bit <laughs> manky boldly. otherwise, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so true, though, just to, to, to even think, oh, if I do this, I'm going to let me buy that art book that I want, you know? Yeah. It's just silly little things like that. But, you know, if you if you are up for a challenge pop over to our website where you'll find, like we said before, three challenges to choose from every month and even a challenge for the entire year. So um, that's www.kickinthecreatives.com and then there you'll find a calendar with all the months and you can have a look at each one and see what's what's in store. And we're going to talk about our previous question, oh, which we was... We finally reached the end of the episode. Oh my goodness. So our previous question was, do you believe that it's important to be accepted by others as being creative or is it just enough to do what you do to justify your work? Okay, so uh, we have got Carol Whitmore. She says, I think it starts with a desire to create for oneself. Then it can become a sharing act for some people. For me, it's that way mostly. When I draw or paint something that pleases me, I'm glad inside. Perhaps then is when I feel I want to share it with others and hope it pleases them too. If it does not please them, it doesn't matter, as I've had as much delight and creative growth in expressing and making it. If it does please them, it can sometimes bring a feeling of completion and connection with my creative self and appreciation that lights my soul and being. Okay, I've got Kaveri Barras. And they say, I create because I don't know any other way to be. It surely feels great to hear appreciation and acceptance, but I don't think a lack of it would discourage me from continuing. Yeah, good. That's a, the that's a right answer, I think. Um, Christy C. Neff, I think it's actually harder to create with the expectations of others in mind. When I create as a result of expressing what is inside of me or because of inspiration, the creation is effortless. Yeah, that's like the commission thing we were yeah. talking about, isn't it? Mm. 
I've got Andy W Art. It's always pleasant to get some recognition. If you're doing work you don't enjoy to achieve it, then it's only another form of job. Elsie Gray, depends on why you create. I create for the pure joy of it. However, sometimes I get caught up in what others think and comparing myself to others rather than myself. I do appreciate the affirmation of other people. Someone else may create to give others joy or emotion, which is great. I've got Sue Watson. I draw just myself, but the positive comments I get do encourage me to continue when I don't feel like it. There's that accountability thing. Yeah. I have got Rusilla Moodley. For as long as I can remember, colour has been a source of inspiration. Literally dipping my fingers into paint makes me feel I'm in my element. My whole being sings with joy. I'm in an altered state. If my artwork is appreciated by others, it's a bonus. More than 50% of my artwork has not been seen and I'm fine with that as the joy it's given me is worth much more. Oh, that's good. Hmm. Now, the thought of putting my fingers in paint is... Ugh. Yeah, you don't like getting messy fingers, do you? No, I no, don't, I don't like getting messy, no. No, I'm not a, fing- I'm not a messy finger person. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Rachel Redding, and she says, I think not being seen for what you are by anyone is a nightmare existence. So yes, having your creative side seen is a lovely thing. Michael Beckett, he says, if you have an innate desire to create, then you are a creative and you don't need anyone's acceptance to do what you want to do. Of course, positive feedback is always nice, but even if someone doesn't like your work, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't accept that you are a creative. And if you do run into a completely negative Nelly, just ignore them. They don't count anyway. I've got Heather Young Ortiz and she says, I used to think that I needed to be accepted and to make a living off my art equals being creative. Not anymore. Even if no one likes my work and I never make any money out of it, I'm an artist. I'm a creative and no one else can take that away from me anymore. I've got UK Mimi Maker. There is a lot of snobbery. I think that's Mem Maker. Oh, is it? (laughs) (laughs) Is it? I don't know. I think so. Sorry. UK Mem Maker. It's... I don't, I, I've seen memes and I always thought they were called memes, but they're obviously not. They're called memes, are they? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there is a lot of snobbery in the creative fields. Real artists judge those they see as inferior. Generally, in my experience, you are inferior if you haven't been to an expensive art school. Not true, though, by the way. No, definitely not true. I've got Ronnie sketch it and she says, I draw and paint because it makes me feel happy and relaxed. I get as much pleasure looking at other people's creatives work too. I feel amazed when I get a like or a positive comment, but ultimately I make my art for my own pleasure. I've got now Lile. And do you think that's right? Or Lily? Um, yeah. I've been so completely engaged in what I'm doing that even if it's not quite what I envisioned at the end, the experience of making it has its own value. I hang most in my garage, which I call the spider gallery, and I'm not sure I could ever part with anything. I never posted pics until last year when someone on a podcast asked what was the point of art if you didn't share it. That made sense. Art is all about making and sharing. Acceptance feels good. But it isn't a motivator for me. Sharing does give me a sense of connection, whether or not anyone likes something. I've got P Mile 39. People often criticise you from the point of insecurity and mood on a particular day. It's so often not about you. So if you can move past that, a community is awesome and friendship is meaningful. I've got drag and fly. There's no accounting for taste. One person's Amazing Amazing. is another ick. Do what you love and love what you do. I've tried to create what others might be interested in and it sucks the enjoyment out of the process. Now I only worry about what I like and if someone else likes it too. Bonus! Have we got any questions? Oh, we we? have. Hang on. I put that in the wrong place. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. This is a really interesting question and I I came up with this and I thought, yes, this is going to be so popular. So, if a therapist was to analyse you through your art, what do you think they would say and why? So, if a therapist was to analyse you through your art, what do you think they would say and why? So, Tara. Oh, God. I haven't even thought about this. You know that every week. I I know. But I don't remember seeing the question. You must have put this on quite last minute. No, I didn't. I I put it on really quickly. (laughs) Oh, oh, I 
I don't you know. don't know. Okay. No. I bet they just. Ha- I'd be. I think they'd just be completely baffled. <laughs> that, yeah. They'd I go. Who know. is this woman? Yeah. It's slightly weird that I have people with one big arm, small eye. What does that say about I me? Don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe no, don't um, know. if anyone has any theories about um, what a therapist would say <laughs> about Tara's art. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I thought that was quite an interesting question. What about you? Anyway. They probably think I was... Oh, it depends whether they look in my sketchbook or my paintings. Okay. If they were looking at my, my paintings, they'd probably think... Um, well, I think it would be very clear that I was a gen- Gemini because the styles are so, so different. So, for instance, like my realism paintings and then my really super loose sort of scribbly sketches in my sketchbook. You couldn't get two different types of art. And then, of course, you've got my... My cartoon. Do you believe in that Gemini stuff and all that? Though? Oh yeah, I do actually. Do you? Yeah, I I am no. a, a definitely a um, typical Gemini. And a friend of mine also. Well, it's actually a friend of my mum's. Her name's Sandra. She's also a Gemini, and she's also very similar, apparently. Yeah, I do. Do you not? So a Gemini is supposed to be on the Capricorns. I don't know because I don't know enough about it to to oh. know that. But all I know is that they're supposed to have like two sides to their personality. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and I suppose, you know, with my painting, it's kind of like that. You, you might look at my painting and think, oh, that, she's obviously uptight. <laughs> <laughs> but then you'd look at my sketch, sketchbook and think, wow, she's flaky. <laughs> so I don't know. I just think she likes a lot of wine. Maybe she, you don't actually like wine. Yeah, no, I know. Exactly. They might, they might actually say, this girl does not know who she is. I don't know. And again, you know, feel free to, to analyse uh, my art <laughs> and let me know what you, you think I am. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and tweet us those weird answers yes. about what you'd say if you were our therapist or <laughs> just at your answer to the questions you can tweet us at kick creatives or let us know in the facebook group which if you haven't joined i highly suggest you do we're also on instagram as kicking the creatives and just in case sam that's confused you the, just to clarify the question yeah. is if a therapist was to analyze you through your art what do you think they would say and why yeah, not me or Sandra. Yeah, I mean, you can add that if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, nothing too mean. No. So we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of these challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you do enjoy the podcast, we would love it if you would leave us a little review um, on whatever platform you listen to us on or just a star rating it all helps us so if if you don't have any time just that'll do but we do appreciate anything like that yeah and if you do like drawing faces go and check out cara bullock's let's face it if you go to kickingthecreatives.com forward slash let's face it and you'll see where i'm one of the guest teachers and don't forget if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support us here at Kicking the Creatives um, towards the cost of running it, which is, is quite a bit, <laughs> you can now support us by buying us a coffee. And we do love our coffees, don't we, Tara? <laughs> yeah. But yes, you can find the link to that on our website. So um, yes, if, if you spare five minutes um, to buy us a coffee, we would love that. Anyway, that is it finally for this episode and we will be back soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Uh, and as always, we want to. Oh, well, I've got cocked up already. Uh, that was your first line of the I know. whole episode, and you I know. It. I'm going to start again. Yeah, absolutely. I think Are you slurping on your tea. <laughs> Is that what I sounded like? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I was hoping I'd get away with that. <laughs> Have you switched off and had a nap? <laughs> oh, do you want the real reason? Uh, Adele yeah, was on. trying to ring me, and I was just texting, podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was my daughter trying to ring me, and I just had to quickly text her and say, "Go away, I'm podcasting. Sorry, I'll speak to you later." Anyway, yeah. So you're learning from other people now. Oh, yes. (laughs) How did you know?